Okay, this is Josh Mandel with a quick tour of some of the work that we've been doing leading up to our Connectathon track coming up uh, the weekend after this coming weekend in Pittsburgh for the HL7 Connectathon. And Mark Kramer from MITRE and I have been putting together a track that we're calling Language First Interoperability. Uh, we've both blogged about these concepts before. We've both been really excited about the prospect of live real-time negotiation between agentic AI systems to figure out all kinds of interactions between different clinical systems. And over the course of defining this track, we've outlined uh, many different kinds of interactions where one side of the conversation knows a whole lot about patient data, uh, maybe the clinical record system or an agent representing the patient, and the other side knows a lot about some kind of policy or rules or requirements. So that could be an insurance company or a clinical trial enrollment system um, or a disease registry. And the idea is to let these two sides negotiate together to figure out uh, what information is needed to get a job done in healthcare. So over the course of this track at the Connectathon, we're going to be testing a couple of nascent interoperability protocols for this kind of conversational interaction. Um, the focus is on a protocol called A to A, that's the agent to agent protocol, but we'll also have um, kind of a, a way to shoehorn in MCP, the model context protocol, as a, a bit of a simpler way to get started. And I'm going to try to show you uh, demonstrations and some reference tooling that I've been working on that will um, cover these kinds of use cases. So the idea is if you're participating in the Connectathon or if you want to try things out at home, uh, you can decide what kind of scenario you'd like to work on. It could be insurance, clinical trials, or anything else. And you can come and, and find one of a set of predefined scenarios that exist inside of uh, this reference tool that I've been working on. It's banter op. That's like a, a pun on interoperability and banter, if that's not totally transparent. Banterop.fire.me. Um, so you could come here and test out one of these existing scenarios or write your own. And I'll show you a quick tour of what both of those things look like so you can get a sense of the features of the platform. So maybe just to get started, I'll show you a scenario that's focused on requesting um, prior authorization for a knee MRI. And uh, in this scenario, there's some descriptions just to help developers know what it's all about. But here's a 38-year-old guy who injured his knee and um, is trying to get prior authorization for an MRI. Um, so I won't go through all the details of the scenario definition, but these definitions are uh, just JSON files that describe um, in detail what the different agents are, what they're trying to do, and they provide a little bit of a knowledge base that specifies, you know, for example, in this scenario, here's an overview of the patient history, who their provider is, what tests they've had done, uh, and this is just arbitrary JSON blobs. Uh, we don't rely on any particular structure here, but the knowledge base can help the agents uh, make more convincing decisions. So the idea of this reference platform is you come to the Connectathon because you're building an actual EHR-based agent that you want to plug in to one of these conversations. And in that case, my system can play the role of the prior authorization agent uh, on the insurance side. Or vice versa, if you're building uh, a server that represents an insurance uh, agent in this scenario, my server can play the role or my client can play the role of the patient. So to give you a quick idea of what that looks like, if you want to try running one of these scenarios, you say which agent you're going to provide. So let's say I'm going to provide the patient agent uh, to this equation. And um, what kind of technology connectivity are we going to use? So I'll say I'm going to use a, a server or a client. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to use a client and I'm going to use an MCP client um, just to get things started in maybe the simplest way. And um, I can go ahead and configure the, the scenario um, with additional instructions here, uh, which I won't do for now. I'll just leave this at the defaults. And I'll say this is, I'm going to create a new room called Josh Testing Demo. Um, and now I've got what's called a room, which is kind of an open channel that my banter op platform is maintaining for me. And this room is waiting for a client to arrive. Um, so let's try to give it a client. Um, I said I want to test using the MCP, Model Context Protocol. And this room has an MCP server URL associated with it. So I'm going to copy this in to my clipboard. And then I'm going to go to claw.ai and see if I can just say, um, create a new connector to this MCP endpoint. So I'm going to go to add connectors in the Claude AI. And they have um, something that they call um, a custom connector. So let me just remove the last one that I put together for previous testing and um, add a new one. So this is going to be knee MRI scenario. I'm going to paste in that custom URL. And 
and um, now I can try configuring it. Good, we see three different tools. Begin a chat thread, send a message to the chat thread, and check for replies. So that's exactly what I'm expecting to see here. And now that I've configured this, I can say a new chat in the Cloud AI site. And uh, I'm gonna say something simple like, uh, actually, let me copy some of the scenario definitions just so um, we've got something to run on here. So I'm gonna just copy this whole JSON scenario configuration and I'm gonna say, play the role of the patient agent and try this out and we'll see how it does. So I'm gonna let Claude do this, um, do its best to play the role of the patient agent. Uh, and the way that Claude.ai has configured its MC, uh, MCP client functionality, each time it does a tool call, it's gonna ask for permissions. Uh, and so I'm gonna say, yeah, you've got permission to always run the begin chat command, uh, but I'm gonna have to give it permission for each of the three tools that it wants to call. So now that it began the chat, it wants permission to send a message to our chat thread, which of course I'm gonna give it. And once it sends a message, it's gonna then ask for permission to check for replies. So sure. So in the context of this demo uh, platform, there are three MCP tools, begin a thread, send a message and write a reply. So this is the first message that Claude sent into our room here, into our chat room on Banderop. It said, hi, I'm an agent representing Alex Ray. So that's what we see in our platform. Um, we can correlate this with what Claude sent here. If I open up the request, we can see it sent a message to conversation ID two that said, hi, I'm an agent representing Alex Ray. So that's the same message happening between these two platforms. And if I really wanna get into the technical details and see what came in over the wire, I can open up this little wire messages sidebar here and I can see that Claude called send message to chat thread and um, this was that what actually um, came in the MCP context uh, or in the MCP tool call this was the tool that we called and these are the arguments that we sent so one message no attachments so meanwhile what happened here was um, our agent which is running uh, actually right inside of my browser read that message from Claude um, and it called some tools um, internally, we called a tool called Lookup Medical Policy, and we got back a result uh, that said, here's a medical policy for knee MRIs. Um, and then we attached that to a response that we returned to Claude. So that response says, thank you for initiating the prior auth. Attached, you can see our policy summary, and then it attached this text document that is sort of the, the knee MRI policy. Uh, now, as an interesting detail, this whole text document was synthesized on the fly just based on my JSON scenario description. Um, so the agent doesn't really know it's living in a simulation. It thinks it's calling a real tool to look up policies. Uh, but under the hood, this policy is, uh, when it calls the lookup tool, this policy is just being synthesized from whole cloth by something that I call the tool Oracle. Um, so let's see what's happening back in the conversation. Um, Claude saw that message. It responded with uh, four attachments of its own. So Claude created an attachment called initial knee injury clinical notes. So it created this attachment about a chief complaint and a physical exam. Um, it created some physical therapy records representing daily physical therapy sessions over the course of a couple weeks. Um, and it created an x-ray report finding no acute fracture. Um, so Claude sent that message back. Um, looks like we had an error in our platform trying to parse um, or make sense of Claude's message here. And Claude responded back and said there was a technical issue. So this shows a little bit of self-healing or self-recovery. Um, I have some heuristics on my side for managing errors, but at the end of the day, I don't wanna keep retrying something in a tight loop if something goes wrong. So I just communicate to the client that something went wrong and that allows the client to respond. And in this case, we were able to recover from that error and we included an MRI approval authorization uh, which is a little JSON format that um, our tool Oracle made up that said, yep, here's your authorization number, here's the patient procedure, here's the reason, um, information about how much it cost the patient, and so forth. And we also included a summary of that approval letter, which doesn't really add a lot to the JSON, but um, there we have it. We wrote a response back, and in the agent-to-agent -agent protocol, um, everything is represented as a task. So in this case, the task has been completed. Um, and so that's a basic conversation back and forth between two agents. In this case, one was running in Claude code and the other was running inside of my uh, browser. If I opened up the network tab of my browser here, I would see that it was issuing calls uh, to an LLM backend back to make all of these decisions, run the tools and so forth. Um, so that's one easy way to get started. And once you have a conversation like this, it should show up in the history of the room. Um, so if you wanna browse later and, and see all the conversations that have happened in your room, you can browse through that history um, and see a transcript of each one, including all the attachments. 
So that's the basic functionality of running one of these rooms. Uh, now let's say you were building your own server. Um, in that case, you could simply connect a client, uh, which looks very, very similar. Um, but in this case, instead of um, you bring your own client, uh, my platform will play the role of the client and you can just tell us where your server URL is. So if you're writing an MCP server, you can configure it with your MCP server URL. Or if you're building a client, you can configure it here. Uh, so either way, whichever kind of component you're bringing, server or client, A to A or MCP, uh, this platform should give you a way to plug in. Uh, and then one other feature I wanted to show off briefly was the ability to create new scenarios here. Um, so there's a whole bunch of scenario ideas that are preloaded, um, but these are just meant to get people thinking. Um, so let's say I'm going to try one here with a orthotics clinic, clinic trying to approve diabetic shoes by reconciling podiatry exam findings and A1C history. Okay, uh, I can click this create scenario button and built into the platform, um, there's the ability to call um, a model that right now is configured as uh, Quinn 3 the 22 billion active parameters instruct model. Um, but really the best way to create these scenarios is just to copy this prompt out of here and paste it into a, a frontier model. So something like GPT-5 works pretty well here. So I'm going to ask GPT-5 to help me create this scenario and give me a JSON block that I can just use. And um, I have the selector here set to auto, but usually for this kind of task, it's going to select what they call the thinking model. And it'll spend 10 or 20 seconds thinking about what to do and then start spitting out um, a JSON block. That can take a little bit of time, so I'm going to let that run in the background and in the meantime show off a couple other features of the platform here. Um, one would be the ability to just plug our own servers and clients in together and do a totally simulated conversation. So let's say, um, you know, I want to try this clinical trials um, scenario. And uh, just to show you these added instructions, I can just say, always talk like a pirate. And we can see if it's going to uh, follow my instructions. And so I'm going to open up a new room for testing out uh, this clinical trial eligibility scenario. And in this case, I'm just going to launch a client that is configured for this same exact scenario. Um, incidentally, the, the way that this server works, um, all the conversations you've seen so far have been automated. I'm not typing any turns into the conversations, but that's because I have a scenario planner turned on. And that means all my messages are going to be planned um, by this uh, AI-based component. But I can turn the planner off. And now I just have a conversation by typing words into this box. Um, but for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to turn the planner on because I just want to let the conversation uh, essentially run by itself. So you can see this planner has been configured with the specific um, JSON of the scenario that we're using, which role we're going to play. And then there's some additional settings, uh, including these additional instructions, which have been populated in here uh, from the setup screen. So all that looks ready to go. I'm going to launch a client. Um, and we can see in the client, there's also a scenario planner set up if I launch it through that link. And in this case, uh, everything is the same, except for the client agent is configured uh, to play the other role, the clinician in this scenario. And uh, the custom instructions are, are stripped here. So let me just give it uh, a different one. Uh, talk like a poet in rhyming couplets. This is just a way to see if um, these instructions are actually being followed. Um, I think I forgot to hit save changes. Oops, there we go. Um, so now it's going to write some queries, look up some EHR data. It's not really doing much in the way of, of poetry, so we can debug that in a little bit. But let me go ahead and send that message along. Uh, now back in the room, uh, we received that message. Um, oops, I accidentally closed the room tab there. I, I went back. So let me just try again. Um, OK, ahoy, Dr. Sharma's agent. We'll be sailing in calm water so far. Camilla appears to meet several inclusion criteria, but I need to confirm, has she been on a stable dose of metformin for three months? Um, so the client receives that message back, and it's drafted something here. Um, she meets the definitions. Great. So we'll allow these guys to go back and forth. And instead of me reviewing all the messages, I can just say, send automatically without review. Uh, and then the agents can just talk back and forth without me uh, bothering them and getting them away. So they're working through some additional criteria. We be drawn close to a final call. Uh, does she have any documented history of pancreatitis? Um, OK. Uh, we invent a note saying that she doesn't have pancreatitis. And then we get a trial eligibility, saying that she is provisionally eligible because she meets all the inclusion criteria. 
uh, and then we go criterion through criterion and say, what did we learn from this conversation and was the criterion met or not? And so we, see, we can see we did meet this inclusion criterion and we didn't meet this exclusion criterion. Um, and so the final decision is a provisional eligibility. Okay, so that's a quick view of how we can just have a conversation entirely with ourselves inside of this platform. Um, let's see how GPT-5 is doing over here. We've crafted a new scenario. So I'm just gonna copy this whole thing uh, onto my clipboard. And I'm gonna go back to this uh, new scenario page and I'm gonna create a new scenario by, uh, oh. <laughs> let me try that again. I'm gonna create a new scenario uh, by just pasting in the raw JSON, um, but it's invalid JSON. I, I think I know why. Uh, sometimes when I copy these, there's a code block at the top, but actually that's not the case here. Let's do a quick debug, a JSON. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create that scenario. Um, a, a quicker and easy thing for me to do would have just been to point out to GPT-5 that it had created invalid JSON and just give another try. But sometimes I like to show um, some, of the, some of the raw underlying fun here. So we've created this scenario um, for this orthotics clinic. There's a clinic representing an orthotics vendor seeking uh, durable medical equipment approval for diabetic footwear. Cool, um, let's just run it and see what happens. So we're gonna open a new room for this. We're gonna open a client to talk to our server and we're gonna begin the conversation with our two scenario-based planners. And I'm just gonna send without review to let these guys go back and forth. Uh, so we're seeking prior auth. Could you confirm the identifiers and specific artifacts you need? And I'll provide a concise criteria aligned packet. So the server comes back and said, I need a name, uh, some diabetes information, some HICVIX codes, key dates. And uh, you know, we turn around and we synthesize an authorization dossier. Looks pretty good. I see a lot of green check marks in here. We've got a prescription. Um, awesome, treating physician for type 2 diabetes. We got some ICD codes in there. Thank you for submitting the prior auth packet. Uh, the members are to receive one pair of shoes and no qualifying acute condition is documented. Please see the attached denial letter. Oh my goodness. Uh, so we didn't read through this scenario in detail and see whether we are supposed to succeed or fail. Uh, but this is some of the fun that you can get into in modeling different scenarios uh, and trying to steer towards different behaviors. Um, so that's a quick tour of the, the platform. Um, the real underlying fun is testing out these protocols, the agent to agent protocol and the model context protocol for having these conversations. Um, and you know, hopefully this tool helps you get started a little faster testing clients and servers together. Um, please do give it a shot. Let me know how it's going for you. Uh, of course, report bugs or challenges you run into with the platform and looking forward to seeing everybody at the Connectathon.